Hello there, heroes! I'm the Orange Ranger, and welcome to Just the Facts on Kamen Rider Dragon Knight Episode 2, Contract with the Dragon. Kit and Batman, who I'm just going to keep calling Batman until the show gives him a name, run away from the dragon, with Batman explaining that they can go through reflective surfaces to get back to the normal world. They go through different surfaces, which gets them separated. separated. Over to Grace's books, where Trent and Lacey learn about Kit. Lacey really has nothing to add but drooling over Kit, while Trent explains that Kit is a felon who's been in trouble ever since his dad disappeared. Meanwhile, that purple monster that's apparently important waves its hand in a reflection, and the spider monster from the first episode is resurrected, now with an improved humanoid upper half. Batman rides through L.A. looking for Kit, stopping near Grace's bookstore to take a look around. Maya recognizes him as the guy who broke her camera and saved her life, but she doesn't seem to remember that, chasing after him. He rides into a dead-end alley with some mirrors at the end of it, and Maya apparently forgets that going through mirrors is something that this guy can do. Kit crashes on his own couch understandably, I think, and has dreams about the previous day, as well as an additional prophetic image of the dragon plunging into his chest. As Trent and Maya learn more about Kit, Kit rides through the city, pursued by both the Red Dragon in the Reflections, as well as Batman, and they have a nice little motorcycle chase. Eventually, Batman takes away Kit's keys, leading Kit to push his motorcycle to a meeting place that he just somehow knew how to get to. Batman tries to warn Kit that contracting with the dragon will result in him getting vented. The two hear a shimmering sound, which is a portal opening between the two worlds. Running to it, they save an electrician from getting pulled into the mirror world by the spider monster. Batman transforms and jumps inside to fight it, but the fight isn't going as easily as it did last time. Kit attempts to transform just like Batman did, but his father pulls him back into Akiba Ranger's world of delusions to inform him that he hasn't been speaking into his son's mind this whole time to hear the sound of his own telepathic voice. Kit finally remembers the contract card, and the dragon flies directly into his chest. He's transformed into Kamen Rider Blank Knight, and then gains some additional dragon flourishes, as well as the blue on his suit transforming into red, officially making him Kamen Rider Dragon Knight. Roll credits. Batman continues to struggle with the monster, but Kit has a superhero introduction fight, easily dispatching the thing with a badass rider kick that has become iconic to the Japanese franchise. Batman is upset that he couldn't prevent Kit from contracting with the dragon, just gruffly telling him that he is Kamen Rider Dragon Knight now. Kit goes home and finds Maya waiting for him with a million questions. He tries to brush her off, but she finally explains that she knows who his dad is and that he's missing. For some reason, this convinces him to trust her with all of the information about the rider stuff. She tries to explain that she thinks his dad's disappearance is connected with something way above Top Secret is investigating, even trying to show him something about it. This part of the episode is really unclear, but it's interrupted by another portal opening. Kit transforms and goes to fight a humanoid crab monster. Losing the battle at first, a new rider shows up. This one, an orange rider! But they turn out to be a crab-themed rider, which means they're friends with the crab-themed monster. Let's deal the cards. Episode 2, Contract with the Dragon. Pros, some great fight scenes, the pacing of Kit's complete transformation, and serialized story with the new rider. Cons, Batman is staying too mysterious. Plot takes a little step back for the action this time and Lacey feels like the only pointless character. Subbing action for plot, really just as strong as the first. Contract with the Dragon gets four cards out of five. The action really picks up this time around. The first episode laid down a lot of plot. This episode gave us a lot of action that made sense thanks to that groundwork. The rider footage from Japan ramps up for obvious reasons, but it is indeed good action, and I really enjoyed it. 
I love waiting until the second episode to see the title hero transform completely. It just speaks again to the wonderful pacing that this show is going to have. It's not even until near the end of this episode that that happens. And it also speaks a lot to Batman's story and plot and motivation. He's tried for the better part of two episodes to prevent this from happening, but he couldn't. So maybe it's destiny. There's a little bit of con in this pro because it does end up feeling ever so slightly tacked on, but especially combined with the slower pacing of the show, I love that the opening arc and then the rest of the story doesn't give us even a second to take a breath. Kit is Kamen Rider Dragon Knight. Maya is going to help him investigate his father's disappearance. Bam! Brand new writer, brand new mystery. Tune in for episode three. Dragon Knight is an extremely serialized show, and I love it for that. However, two full episodes now, both of which feature the main heroes fighting side by side, and Batman does not have a name yet. Batman does not have a real name yet. Batman does not have a hero name yet like Kamen Rider Dragon Knight. I know it's coming but he's crossed over into annoyingly mysterious now. Maybe with coming to terms with Kit taking up the mantle of Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, those answers are coming, but it's just getting annoying having to continually call him Batman. I really hope he gets a name in episode three, and I don't have to keep calling him Batman for too Len. I mean long. You don't even have a first goddamn name, mentor! This might be symptomatic of an overall shift from a plot-focused episode to an action-focused episode, but it did feel a little bit too far for the most part. Lots of action in this episode, momentary little breath takes mainly for comic relief, and then right back to the action. Is this show going to find a good balance between action and plot? Well, obviously, yes, since it's beloved by so many, myself included, but I'm just hoping they did figure that out rather early on. I don't remember everything about this show. And yeah, Lacey. One review, and I already had people complaining about Lacey. She has two scenes in this episode, and they are both completely pointless and paint her as a vapid airhead. Her first scene, she drools over Kit, which at best establishes him as a possible romantic interest for both of the female leads. And considering the fact that he just turned 18, I can't help but still find that ever so slightly squicky. Later, she serves to remind the audience that non-involved characters can't see the stuff involved in the mirror world even when they're staring right at it. But one, we already knew that. And two, her line about Maya's fashion was just the wrong way to have that character go about it. I really hope Lacey gets some better scenes soon. This is the close to the first main arc of the show, and overall, it was fantastic. A well-paced intro to the main hero that effectively demonstrates that perhaps he's not the most important piece of the puzzle, but just part of whatever is going on. Nice fights against interesting monsters, and perhaps a glimpse at the one pulling the strings. Minor spoilers, the main villain finally appears in episode 3. We see them in a different look in the preview, and I can't wait! So, since I'm so excited, let's take a peek at the third episode of Kamen Rider Dragon Knight. Ugh, the title is a bit of a spoiler. Common Rider Incisor. Kit struggles against the new crab themed Common Rider, making the bat themed rider decide to finally train him for the battle ahead. That's going to wrap up another Common Rider Dragon Knight episode review. Thank you, heroes, so much as always for watching. Now that the video's done, you can let me know what you thought of this episode, as well as my review of it down in the comments below. While you're down there, make sure you smack that thumbs up button to let me know that you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like any merchandise themed to my channel, feel free to check out my Teespring, grab yourself a t-shirt, a mask, etc, etc. Until next time, heroes, may the power of the cards protect you. 
he rides away, he... <laughs> now, he hasn't been speaking into Kit's mind this whole time, just to hear the own sound of his telepathic, like Common Rider, Dragon Knight. I know it's coming. <laughs>